Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Product of Array Except Solf. It is a medium. Let's get right into it. Given an array nums of n integers where n is greater than 1, return an array output such that output of i is equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums of i. So at i, we return the product of all the numbers around i except itself. So given the input 1, 2, 3, 4, we output 24, 12, 8, 6, because at index 0, we multiply everything but whatever's at index 0. So 2, 3, 4, which multiplies out to 24, then 1 times 3 times 4, 12, then 1, 2, 4, which is 8, and then 1, 2, 3, which is 6. Constraint is guaranteed that the product of the elements of any prefix or suffix of the array, including the whole array, fits in a 32-bit integer. So we don't have to worry about integer overflow here. And we have to solve it without division and an O of n time. Follow-up, can we solve it with constant space complexity? The output array does not count as extra space for the purpose of our analysis. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. One, two, three, four, five. How are we going to solve this? We can't, you know, go ahead and multiply everything and just divide by the index we're on since division isn't allowed. So instead, we're going to have to go ahead and multiply everything except our current index. So everything to the left of our index and to the right of it. So over here, our output is going to be the left has nothing, the right has 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is 120 for index 0. For index 1, 1 is to the left of it, 3, 4, 5 are to the left or to the right of it. So that is 60. Then it is 1, 2 times 4, 5, which is 40. Then 1, 2, 3 times 5, which comes out to 30. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 24. So this is our output. And that's what we can actually do with our input, right? Take the left and the right for a given index and keep appending to our output array and simply return that. So for index 2, for example, find the left, skip over the current index and the right. For index 3, go over everything in nums. So left, skip over our current one, right, multiply it all out, and keep appending to our output array. But if we do this for every single number in nums, we're going to have to go through the entire array again which is n squared time complexity, but we wanted O of n. So how are we going to do that? Well, what do we notice when calculating the left for index 3? We did 1 times 2 times 3. The left for index 4 was what we had before, 1 times 2 times 3, times 4. So we'll be doing repeating calculations. We already know what this comes out to. We simply need to add 4 to it. And in that manner, we're going to keep building our left and right arrays. And then we'll just have to multiply them together. So for over here, what is to the left of index 0? Nothing. So we can simply just write 1 for that. What is to the left of 2? That is 1. What is to the left of 3? So at index 2, what is to the left of it? Everything multiplied together. That is just 2. At index 3, everything multiplied to the left of that becomes 6. And we know at this index, 6 is a multiplication of everything before it. So for our next index, we can simply use this answer, multiply by the new number we see, and this number now represents everything before our current index to the left of it. And in that same manner, we're gonna build up right now. So what is to the right of five? Nothing, we can just write one. Right of four, that is just five. Right of three, four times the last thing we had seen, 20. Right of two, three times whatever we had seen. Since this number represents Everything multiplied together anyway. We don't need to repeat that operation. Simply just multiply this new number. So that is 60. 
and then to the right of one, everything together. So 3, 4, 5, we know is 60. Simply multiply 2 to that to get 120. And of course, this is in reverse order. We're appending to the array. So we do want to reverse this list. So 120, 60, 25, and 1. And this is our right. This represents everything to the right for a given index. Now, once we multiply left and right, we get our output array. So this output right here, we multiply left and right together for the index to get our output. 1 times 120 is 120. 60 times 160. 220, we get 40. 6 times 5, 30. 24, 1, we get 24. Now, this is built in linear time O of n. This is just one scan. Same with right, one scan. We are getting our output in O of n. However, we also wanted to solve it with constant space complexity. Here we're using O of n space for both our left and right arrays, and we're finally returning our output. What does the question ask? It says that, can we do it in constant space complexity, stating the output array does not count as extra space? So let's make use of that. How about, instead of right being right, we call this output. Then all we'd have to do is as we build left, we simply multiply right by left and change the number stored in output. Doing this, we still have this O of n for left though. How do we keep left but get rid of this space? So we had, we had this as output, this is output, it was right, and this is our left. How do we have left without using O of n space? Well, what did we say? For index 3, we knew we had to multiply 1 times 2 times 3. For index 4, we take that number we had and simply multiply 4 to it. So we just need one number, and we can have that one variable keep track of our entire left. So left initially is 1. We initialize that to 1 since, you know, we want to keep the identity. Anything times 1 is just itself. At index 0, we have 1. At index 1, we simply multiply the index previously with left. So 1 times 1 is 1. Index 2, we do index 1 times left, which is 2. And this represents the left array. Index 3, we simply multiply whatever is behind that index times left, so 6, and that matches up. For index 4, we go back 1, multiply that with left, so 4 times 6 is 24. And as we build this left, we see that we formed this array, and for each iteration, we simply replace output with whatever is stored in output right now times left. So we had 1 for left, so we do 120 times 1, and again we had 1 over here, so 60 times 1 is 60. Then we saw 2, so 2 times 20 is 40. We simply replace output with our new output, with our new answer. We again update left, so left now becomes 6. 6 times 5 is 30. We rewrite output, update left again at 24 rewrite output to be 24. And this is how right now equals output. And we simply return that. So to code this up, let's start with our output initialized to one. For i in range len of nums minus one, zero minus one. So what we're doing is iterating backwards going from um, right to left and appending to output. This is actually our right, we're just calling it output for now. So to build this up, we do output.append. The last thing that was stored in output times our current nums. And we want to reverse this, so output equals output reversed because remember we wanted to switch the entire array since we were appending but this is right so we wanted to go in the right order so this is output 
And now we want to calculate left. So for i in range when nums. And let's have left initialized to 1. So at index 0, we have output equals output at this index times left. So 1 times whatever is in output, and that makes sense because at index 0, we only multiply everything to the right. There's nothing to the left of index 0 that would really change our answer. And now we update left. So left times equals nums of i. So as we go in this loop again at index 1, we've updated left to hold index 0 as a value, which represents everything to the left at index 1. And we have whatever's to the right of index 1 in output right now. So output gets replaced by the product of those two, and we update left again and keep going in that manner. So in the end, all we have to do is return output. And let's get rid of this run code. Runtime error in object is not subscriptable. Oh, this needs to be output at index i. So for each index, we replace whatever was in there with left times that index run code, accepted and submit. And it's accepted as well. So what we did here is we first stored everything that represented the right multiplications for a given index in our output array, went through nums again, this time calculating left using only a variable, updating output and finally returning that. So that is constant space O of one, and linear time O of n. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.